how's it going hope all is well welcome back to my channel today i'm here to share the story of gloria this video is to bring awareness to the injustices in our community i mean no harm to the families and friends of the victims all information included is public knowledge. The information included was gathered by local news outlet. Gloria was 20 years old. She moved to America from South Africa. She was a South African citizen and a resident of McKinney, Texas. She also loved Beyonce. In a 2016 interview, she talked about how Beyonce was her mother and how much she was an inspiration to all black girls. Gloria was a beautiful person to all those around her. Her friends described her as a kind soul. Is that her? Yep. Are you taking a video? Ah, she's in the back. <laughs> Gloria was living with her 19-year-old white male friend. Some reports say that he belonged to a very wealthy family. It's unclear the relationship Gloria had with her family. And since deleted messages her roommate shared between the both of them, the messages suggested that she did have a mental illness and it could have been triggered after she was fired from work. In the alleged messages, the two had a normal conversation all the way up to July 10th. After that, Gloria never responded back to her roommate's texts. Gloria went missing Thursday, July 9th, and supposedly passed in the garage the same day. Gloria was in the garage for three days where people reside and repairs were being made. It wasn't until Sunday, July 12th, when her roommate found her. The McKinney Police Department has declared the incident of 20-year-old Gloria as an incident conflicted by herself. The story went viral on social media, July 28th, 2020. And the questions everyone asked is why no one heard about this? Who did this to her? And some even questioned why the roommate haven't been arrested. That week, the roommate made a post to try to clear his name. This is what he said. Gloria had been renting a room in my house since last September. And the last contact that I had with her was on July 9th and our conversation was completely normal. On Friday, July 10th, service people came to the door to pick up fans in the house since our water heater in the garage had leaked and the walls needed to be dried out. I texted her and tried to call her, asking her to answer the door since I was at work, but she was unresponsive. When I came home later that evening, I checked in her room to see if she was okay. I saw her bathroom light on, so I had assumed that she was in there and fine. My mom was flying in that night to help deal with the water damage, so I had to pick her up from the airport. And when we got home, we discovered Gloria wasn't in her bathroom or anywhere else in the house. We called the police to report her missing once we had realized that she wasn't in the bathroom and found that she had left an envelope on her bed with her driver's license and her last paycheck. She was fired from her job on July 2nd due to a mistake at work. Eight days before that, she went missing. I checked every room in the house, but didn't think to check the garage because the garage door is broken and practically nobody goes in there. The police told me that not much would have been done with a missing persons report since she had left on her own accord and was an adult. On July 12th, after I got home from work, there was an overwhelming smell in the house that made me recheck each room and I found out the smell was strongest in our laundry room, which shares a wall with the garage. That's when I checked the garage and found that Gloria had taken her own life and I called the police immediately after. Gloria was loved by me, my family, and my friend that was also close with her and we are still grieving her passing. There are so many hate crimes that black people endure every day that are not reported, covered up, or not believed by police or media. It's understandable why people would jump to such conclusions. But in this case, Gloria, my friend, and my roommate suffer from mental illness. Please stop spreading false information. The roommate allegedly decided to release the text messages from July 2nd all the way up till July 10th. 
in those text messages, you can see that she talked to him about being fired. She also allegedly talked to him about, you know, worrying about what she's going to do. He also said that he spoke to his mom. His mom said you could get unemployment, but don't stress out. Don't worry about it. I don't want her to be worried. Then you can also see in the text messages the roommate allegedly saying that somebody is going to be at the door and please answer the door because I have to go to work. McKinney Police Department furthermore posted a statement on their Facebook page refuting the speculation that someone else did this to Gloria. They stated that they typically do not discuss these types of situations including the name of the person but due to the public nature of this case, they felt the need to clarify the inaccuracies. They claimed her roommate fully cooperated during the investigation and all the evidence in the case led investigators to believe it was self-conflicted. The medical examiner's findings are still pending, but the preliminary examination of the body has not uncovered any evidence to contradict what was discovered at the residence. They also clarified that the case is still under investigation and that is not closed at this time. The local NAACP chapter stated they look forward to the autopsy. They also want to see photos from the scene, a statement from the roommate, and a release of a handwriting analysis of the letter. Please remember the roommate allegedly said she left a letter with her driver's license and her last paycheck. I agree with the NAACP. I will not accept a statement from the roommate solely based off of social media because who knows if that was really him or not? Who knows if that was the truth or not? There needs to be more information that's put out there regarding this young lady's case. This is very sad and disappointing that this is being swept under the rug. Honestly, in the text messages that were released, it sounds like any other person that get fired from their job, that is the reaction that people will have. They're trying to claim that this young lady had bipolar disorder. They're trying to claim that she was severely depressed. They're putting all these mental illnesses on this young lady with no proof. There's really no proof. I do remember a few years ago, there was an incident that happened at a pool party where a young black girl was being arrested by a police officer while people just stood and watched. Yes, he was fired, but it took social media's reaction to get him fired. So I really believe that there is just something that's not right in that community. And I hope and I pray that this young lady get the justice that she deserves. You guys, I will continue to pray for her, friends, and her family. You guys, let me know your thoughts and your opinions about this. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really wanted to wait a little bit longer to see if the police department came out with any more information, but I feel like we're just going to be stuck with what we got. I will continue to look at their local NAACP chapter just to see if they share any more information to us. I love you guys dearly. Thank you guys so much for watching. Bye.